The standard treatment for ulcerative colitis Crohn's or any form of IBD is to throw a lot of anti-inflammatory drugs at the problem. But how effective are they? Please follow us on Instagram at High Carb Health and don't forget to click on that green H so you follow our stories and get to see everything that we eat and do throughout the day. If you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel, click on that subscribe button and the bell notification icon so you are notified of all future videos. Now, if you've had IBD or you know someone who's had IBD, you'll be aware that a lot of the times the medications start to fail or people flare up again under certain types of medications. So a lot of people are on the merry-go-round of many different medications, you know, starting with the anti-inflammatories, going to the steroids, going to the immunosuppressant medication, and it just seems like you're hopping from one to the next to the next as inevitably one of them doesn't seem to work anymore and your symptoms return and it's just like this vicious cycle of you know medication after medication until your GI tells you well mm, there's nothing really I can do except for take your colon out and no one really wants that do they? So what I want to talk to you about today is the effectiveness of the medication used for ulcerative colitis and Crohn's disease or any other form of IBD because they're quite consistent and common for what we tend to know as autoimmune conditions but you'd be surprised that if you look at the science about how effective they actually are or well how ineffective they are when it comes to easing the symptoms so first of all let's take a step back and look at what medication does to the body medication is designed to suppress symptoms you're never going to get to the root cause of the issue when you deal with medications because they're not designed to do that Medications are designed to relieve the symptoms that you're having, which means that over time they're going to give you some relief, they may not relieve everything, and the majority of people that I've spoken to with ulcerative colitis and Crohn's is that they never quite feel right on the medication, and a lot of the times those medications failed them, and they've got to try a new one, and then a new one, and then a new one. So. Let's just start looking through some of the science and the research that um, people have done on some of these medications and see what the effectiveness rates are, how many people they are able to get into remission and, you know, is it really worth going on this merry-go-round or might it be better to choose a more natural approach and deal with the root cause of the problem and heal yourself so that you don't have to be on medications just like Shamise has for more than seven and a half years now. So what we find when we look at the studies is initially when people are diagnosed with IBD, they're going to be placed on a medication like ASA, mesalazine, or some form of steroid medication. And when we look at these medications, we only find that 20% to 55% of the people who go on those medications are able to achieve remission, which means that 45 to 80% of people who are on these medications never achieve what we call the relief of symptoms. Now those don't feel like good odds to me. I mean if you want to go down the medical approach at least you want it to give you some relief. But as we see for the majority of people they don't even re receive any form of relief when they go on these medications and medications have side effects. We can't think that if you go on a medication it's going to be free of any risk. Any kind of medical treatment regardless of what it is is going to involve risk and many of these medical treatments involve side effects, some of which are pretty severe and we want to try and um, I guess ideally not have to deal with them in the first place. And once these initial drugs, the ASA, mesalazine, uh, pentasa, some form of steroid, whether it be prednisone or budesonide, tend to fail, the doctor will tend to put uh, the patient on something stronger like a drugs such as azathioprine is really commonly used uh, for people who have IBD. Well, what is the success rate for azathioprine? For azathioprine, we saw induced remission maintained for a year for about 60% of people, which means that 40% of people are not achieving remission. Another drug that's commonly used is methotrexate, and what we found in the, the research on this drug is that 30 to 60% of people fail to achieve remission. From there, it goes to what we call the MABs or the immunosuppressive medications. And even these tend to have issues. We don't see very, very strong success rates with immunosuppressive medications. 
With the immunosuppressant medications such as infliximab, adalimumab or sertolizumab, what they found was that remission rates are under 35% or less. And when they can't maintain remission or when patients cannot maintain remission on these kind of medications, their major option is surgery. I know there's a few different infusions and immunosuppressive medications out there in the current environment, but I would suggest that the success rate is very similar for all of these ones. And so overall, after looking at all of these different medications, what the authors of the study found was that one in five people are going to require some kind of bowel surgery or resection surgery. And that is not very good odds. One in five. You know? It could be you. And we really want to try and make sure that we keep all the organs in the body intact. They all have a very important role to play. They're not just there by chance. And so, you know, by going down the medical route, you've got a one in five chance of having a part of your bowel removed. And those aren't great odds for me. Um, and the major thing with med the medical route is they tell you from the beginning that you're not going to heal. You're going to be on medication for the rest of your life. You're most likely to have some part of your bowel removed. I mean, we put a lot of faith in these people who cannot even help us heal in the first place. So, you know, when we when we look at uh, the natural approach or the changing your diet and, and looking at uh, your overall lifestyle and you see the results that people are getting on the program, basically they're healing, they don't have medication. And, and that is something that's massive. And, you know, isn't that a really strong goal to aim for is to be medication free and symptom free once you've been diagnosed with IBD and, you know, I urge everyone to try and aim for that, that situation because, you know, the, the life, uh, quality of life when, when you don't need to be on medications, when you don't need to deal with side effects is, is, is just huge. You can't even explain it. You know, when you see the, the happiness that people have when they, when they're able to come off their medications, they don't have to rely on them. They don't need to think about where the toilet is. Uh, going to be when they can feel like they're under control of their own health and that's that's what true health is not relying on somebody else um, to prescribe you with pills or infusions or needles or surgeries that's that's not true health and and we really need to take a, a different view and shift away from that mentality that you know the doctor is going to solve all of our problems because realistically unless they've been trained in nutrition they understand uh, enough about the gut microbiome and there's some really amazing doctors that do um, they're not going to be able to help you heal and and that's just the cold hard facts of the matter so let's talk about some of these side effects because the side effects are pretty scary and i don't know how many people get a real good idea of what the side effects of these medications are so let's look at steroids to begin with long-term use of steroids is quite unsafe uh, some of these side effects include gastric ulcers Cushing's habitus, which is like central obesity, a moon face, red cheeks, wasted limbs, hyperglycemia, diabetes, muscle weakness, fragile skin, purple striae or stretch marks, uh, flaring up of latent infections, delayed wound healing, cataracts, osteoporosis, glaucoma, and hypothalamic pituitary axis suppression, all these hormonal issues that people are experiencing. Uh, and we also see an increased risk of opportunistic infections and the development of lymphomas or blood cancers. Now, I don't know about you, but those are some pretty long and list of severe side effects that I don't want to deal with. Um, my clients don't want to deal with them. And so that's why we're so keen on trying to teach people how or educate people how we can get off these medications, how we don't need to rely on these medications for the rest of our life. And we can live a life after colitis and Crohn's. We can be medication free. We can be symptom free if we choose to follow the evidence and a diet and lifestyle that's proven to help achieve these outcomes uh, for so many people. And because we don't want to keep people on steroids for a long period of time, we tend to look at the biological drugs. And even these, there's, there's research that shows the long-term use of those is not uh, free of risk. It's not necessarily safe. So long-term use of steroids bearing new drugs such as infliximab, adalimumab or sertolizumab may increase the risk of infections and malignancies, especially non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. And often when we combine these immunosuppressive medications with steroid type medications, 
we find that this can lead to major adverse effects, including infection, malignancies, and diverse immune reactions. So there you have it, team. I mean, I don't know how many people have shared this kind of information about the medication, but the risks are there. You know, you go to the doctor, you just think that I'm going to take these pills and they're going to give me uh, some relief or I'm going to be in remission and I'm going to need to take them for the rest of my life, but it's going to be okay. Well, the research suggests that it's probably not. And uh, the, the adverse risk effects that are related to these medications are... Uh, are very serious and we need to look at that seriously and and you know especially because people with IBD generally are diagnosed at a very young age uh, if you follow the medical approach you're going to be stuck on these medications for years and decades and you know it's not necessarily going to be good for you in the long term to stay on these medications for a long period of time as the research shows so as we recommend and we believe our approach in the long term is safer because there's no real side effects to eating fruits and vegetables. If you can get off your medications, if you can follow a dietary pattern and choose the lifestyle, lifestyle habits that are going to keep you healthy in the long term, that is the best way to deal with this. Just like Shamiz has, just like I have, I've got off four different medications since I changed to a plant-based diet. Like so many of our clients have been able to achieve these results and you can see it, you know, have a look at the testimonials. Hundreds of people healing their bodies, getting off the medications and living a medication and symptom free life. And you know, if you want to find out more information about how you can achieve this, just check out all the different videos on our YouTube channel. We've got hundreds of free videos with lots of information about how you can do this. Uh, if you need some help, fill in the health survey on our website and um, you're entitled to a free 30 minute consultation with Shamiz. Uh, we'd love to have a chat to you about how we can help. Uh, and you know, if you subscribe to our channel, Click on that bell notification icon so you'll get notified of all future videos. Give this video a like if you found the information useful and leave a comment below uh, if you have any questions about what I've just talked about. Until next time guys, eat plants and lots of them. See ya. Give this video a thumbs up if you know what it's like to live with IBD and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. This channel is designed to help people recover from colitis, Crohn's and any other form of IBD. You can always head to our website highcarbhealth.com for a free 30 minute consultation from anywhere in the world. And remember, there is a life after colitis.